All right, looks like we are live. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm here with the cast of Lysistrata. I wanna thank everybody who tuned in and joined us for the get down uh, at Club Acropolis. <laughs> I wanna give a big thank you to the cast and everybody who's been working behind the scenes to uh, put this all together. And I really wanna thank Bobby as well for uh, this adaptation, uh, which is so fun. So I wanted to ask, Bobby, let's just start out with a couple questions for him. Why Lysistrata? What drew you to adapting the piece and why in sort of a disco funk uh, vibe? When I first wanted to do it, um, it was for a, a college Hi. production. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> and uh, um, I, I started with the, the Greek text and um, did a you know, pretty much just a straightforward translation of that. And then when you, you have to start making choices when you translate um, for contemporary audience, be, because a lot of the icons don't, um, uh, unless you're going to, you know, have a, a glossary, <laughs> you know, and a history lesson, uh, certain of the, you know, Greek references and stuff, just, it just they don't make sense anymore. So I call it updating the icons. And I, do, I did the same when I translated Tartuffe. Um, and uh, what other translator? I, I've done uh, a couple of Euripides plays and a few Sophocles plays. But anyway, so um, looking for eras, you know, the 1970s, sort of early 70s, late 60s, early 70s. And probably a lot of it had to do with my own experience. I, I, I was, I'm a Kent State graduate. Uh, I was there in 1970. We just had the 50th anniversary of May 4th. Um, and 1970 was also the year that uh, Germaine Greer uh, published her The Female Unit, which is one of the seminal works in feminist literature. So I thought the, the, 1970 was a great year uh, to set Lysistrata for those two reasons, that it was a war year. Um, it was a year when there was revolution. And I also should mention at Jackson State, uh, students were also massacred at Jackson State. They just don't, uh, because they were African-American students, people don't give it as much attention uh, about the war. So that, that's kind of why. And, uh, and that and I, I like funk music. I mean, uh, definitely the Ohio players, because I'm from Ohio. Um, but, uh, you know, James Brown, um, Earth, Wind and Fire, um, uh, Miles Davis, you know, all, all the funk players. I, I just like that music. So that's kind of why. Is, is that a good answer? <laughs> it is. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we certainly have had fun playing in this uh, yeah. uh, funk vein. Uh, mm -hmm. We've certainly enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, if you're watching us on Facebook, go ahead and type some questions for us into the comments below. Uh, and uh, we will take a look here and try to answer some of your questions. I do want to hear from the cast a little bit about how it was uh, diving into Lysistrata Estrada and, and over this medium too, uh, working over Zoom and performing with other people. What were some of the challenges? What were uh, some of the, the unexpected joys of that? Anyone uh, feel like speaking to that? Great, thanks, Mary. Hey, um, hey, Marianne Moreno. I read um, Lysistrata. I think that um, it, it was de it definitely took a few minutes at the very beginning of our rehearsal because there is that you know half a split second of a delay, and you know we're we're in the business of human connection, and it's definitely kind of a, a riding a brand new skateboard or something to try and have this human connection across a screen where I'm not even sure how long their delay is versus my, you know, so it's interesting. But then upon, you know, watching it back, I realized, oh, this is actually what we do kind of when we audition on camera. We're trying to create a full story within this tiny little box, you know, and we're the only one in the background is really not that interesting, you know, but we're trying to create a full story. So, um, so it was, it was delightful to watch thinking, oh, you know what? I have done this before and we, it, this is possible and it, it, it's working. It's kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Anyone else want to speak to that? Yeah. We'll hear from Rachel. 
Yeah, I definitely agree with Mary. It felt way more like an audition than it did um, a play. And it's like, wait, but I already have the part. <laughs> um, I think uh, for me, it's been, uh, I've been acting a lot less during this time. Uh, as much as I'm trying to stay in classes online and do tapes and read and keep myself in it, um, I've just missed acting so much. So I think by the end of the day, when I had like my big star earrings on and we were just like dancing, doing the curtain call and it was like, I'm acting <laughs> and it's so much fun. And it was just like, it's just a whole breath of life to the day and to like my week really, because I got to do what I love to do. And I got to work with people that I've looked up to for a while but I haven't got to meet face to face or anything like that and it's so cool that we're from like Orlando and Chicago and uh it's just so cool because we wouldn't have been able to do this through any other medium so I actually end up really falling in love with the process good that's great to hear yeah yeah it is super it's super enriching for us to to collaborate artistically during this time I think I've I have felt that so much uh, and it's a, and it's a joy to be able to share and share that work uh through this medium um yeah there's a lot of joy in that a lot of meaning um anyone else want to comment on uh the this uh the process for them yeah go ahead sean um in addition to like being super excited to work with all y'all i was very scared um, for something, especially like when you take into account it's classical text, which usually requires like a bunch of table work, a bunch of like working out what everything means. And then also it's like, it's a comedy and uh, something that I know typically in rehearsals for comedies, the thing I rely so much on is timing and my chemistry with uh, the people I happen to be acting with. Um, so I think it, the fact that I think it went so well is like an, a testament to how, I mean, A, talented and B, professional everyone in this cast really is. So it was really just a delight to kind of, even in this weird medium that we're experimenting in, it was still a chance to kind of play with some really lovely text. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and you guys, just so you know, I'm, I'm peeking over here at the Facebook Live and you guys are getting tons of praise. Thank you everybody for um, your compliments and uh, your comments. Uh, we do have a question that I'm going to put out to the group. So this is uh, from Julian. Thanks so much for this question. Since this was a reading, did anyone have some or all of their parts memorized? And um, yeah, how, lines. How, how did you balance uh, lines and uh, directing some of your stuff to the camera? Um, how, how is that for you? Yeah, Rachel. I, there's a little bit of an art to cold reading that you kind of learn as an actor over time just through um, auditions over the years. And sometimes you're even lucky enough that you get to take a class in it. Um, uh, and it's really hard to go into all the, the technical details, but myself personally, I was just kind of bringing all of those cold reading skills that I've developed over the years, um, which is, uh, basically put my thumb somewhere near where my line is on the page and know who's talking before I say it <laughs> <laughs> and have it somewhat memorized <laughs> in the loosest terms. So yeah, mm -hmm. did that a lot. Yeah, and a cold, uh, tell us what, maybe some of us might not know what a cold read is. Oh my God, maybe, yeah, yeah, you're so right. Maybe, yeah. A, a cold read is when you would go to an audition and they would give you um, uh, uh, pages from the script and uh, you may have never seen them before and you have to read for the first time and you don't have a whole lot of time to prepare before you have to do it for whoever you're auditioning for. So that's called a cold read. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, those scare me. Cold reads are scary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, somebody says, Sean, you did so great with your character. <laughs> uh, yeah, people say, I laughed a lot. Um, what, Thank you. What were, yeah, what were some um, moments? Oh, we've got a question. I'm going to read this question before I dive into my next one. Okay, Ricardo says, um, 
Oh, would you describe your experience directing a live stream performance? It seems like directing television plays in the 50s. Ooh, yeah. So I guess I'll speak to that a little bit. Um, one, I, uh, yeah, we have to talk a lot about focus, um, trying to give energy into the camera. One thing that we um, really tried to work on was, um, it's tough because of sometimes the lag, but trying to, especially in comedy, it's just got to clip, 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 clip. So trying to really pick up those cues and not be polite about waiting for um, the next person. Um, and then also I've got a, a fantastic team just thinking about aesthetics. There's some things in this script that I wanted to um, have represented in a fun way, like um, the mayor getting wrapped in toilet paper. So I was like, let's give that a moment, put a little music behind it. And, uh, and you know, Bobby cracks me up. And, the, and so that I was like, that just makes sense. So a couple of those like montage moments, we, um, we kind of, I wanted to sculpt those to um, stand in for some moments in the script where there's music set to action, uh, or um, action set to music rather. And uh, so those were super fun to put in. And especially with this like funky disco um, uh, backdrop that we got. And I want to thank Nick for, uh, Nick is our sound designer. I want to thank him for putting those tracks together. It was, they're so fun. And, and like they were saying, just at the end, getting to like die, uh, jive and dance at the end there was so fun. Um, and I want to thank Ryan for our editor who, um, you know, spliced the, those pieces together for us and, and is able to make that, that magic happen for us. Um, yeah, I think I try to, in directing, it, in directing it, I try to think about watching it as a viewer and sort of what are the, mis what are the links that I need that may not necessarily um, exist that you, that you would see on stage and how can those be represented and still get a beautiful like vibe um, that you can track through the whole thing. Um, but these, I'll say that these guys come in with choices made, char fun characters, and, and a sense of play, right? Like in something like this, I think the greatest thing is to come in with a sense of play. And everybody just did that, and I think we had a blast uh, putting it together. Yeah. Let me see if I've got another question here. Ooh, what is your favorite disco movie? <laughs> oh, I got I gotta think. Anybody want to answer that? Favorite disco funk movie? I mean, S Saturday Night Fever, right? Pretty standard. I'm having to. I can't think of others. Anybody else have a Z favorite? Xanadu comes to mind for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 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 Well played. Any other ones? Move. Move. Is that a movie? Is that a movie? I don't know it. I'm being offered that. Not a movie. <laughs> Not a movie. Never mind. <laughs> okay. Great. Um, <laughs> good. And um, keep Does asking the dance us any other scene from Pulp Fiction count. <laughs> yes, it absolutely counts. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Totally. Um, what are some of y'all's favorite moments from the play? Maybe something that feels like it has some resonance or um, uh, to today, right? We have themes of like roles of women, um, standing up for something, the power of no. Um, are there any moments in the play that kind of resonated with you or moments that you just love? Uh, Harold and Lampito need their own play. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, yes. And also that mustache needs its own play. Yes, epic. Any other moments? I think I what I like about it overall is how you know fun and silly it is. I still like pointing out some really good uh, things to think about and opinions and kind of you know everything that that needs to be discussed, but does it in a way that doesn't make people go, "Oh my God, they're giving this to me again. They're giving it to me again." We can all kind of laugh and be comfortable while still taking in. Oh wait. We should consider <laughs> like women are people yay right um without mm -hmm. kind of bashing you over the head with it yeah i think comedy does that for us right in a way it gives us a way 
to a way in to listen and uh, for things to be sort of palatable in a way for us to process them. And we don't, we're not immediately sort of checked out from them. It's an, a way to access those conversations, those difficult conversations. Any other moments from y'all? I really enjoyed the oath scene when all the women were taking the, the oath. Um, and I like that women are shown as sexual beings. And I think it's kind of crazy to me that when this was written, it was, it, they were saying then women are sexual beings. And it's crazy that we still have to say it now <laughs> so many years later. Um, but I think it's, it was a lot of fun getting to play that. Um, and uh, I think it was just, yeah, it was fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I realized that um, the question that somebody asked us was not your favorite disco movie, but your favorite disco move. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, and let's go around and uh, give me, just maybe give us a little, your favorite disco move that you got. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, yeah, let's just see it. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Yeah, that, I love that one. <laughs> I think kind of the problem with disco, the reason you see us all doing this as a go-to is disco is a big dance form and we've got this. So right. like any of, your, frame. any of your really good disco moves, we're kind of, you know, <laughs> have to get really far back to do the yeah. good ones. And the turtle <laughs> is completely lost. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I did the turtle, you just get completely lost. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, I have somebody asking if you guys know each other. Have you guys worked with each other? Maybe a few of y'all. Uh-huh. Yeah. Who wants to kind of talk about the family ties that are here? Robbie. Haha, <laughs> nominated. Uh, so some of these beautiful people I had the honor of directing in Stop Kiss for the studio. So they're the Stop Kiss kids. Mm -hmm. Is that what we call them? Is Joe still on here? Yay, Joe! He's watching. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's been such a fun part of uh, this virtual series is is getting to see all of our, our loved uh, collaborators, friends, performers, and pulling everyone back together. Um, that has been super special for me and I know for everybody who's been watching and who are fans of after seeing um, your magnificent performances at the studio. Yeah, that's been a super, super fun thing. Um, oops, somebody's talking about the uh, striptease scene. Um, <laughs> yes, yes, they say it's the best in the play and uh, always the funniest, funniest part of the play and uh, that y'all killed it. Uh, that was such, such fun to put together. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes, we, we very much enjoyed, enjoyed that. So, the Twix. The Twix, the surprise <laughs> Twix. <laughs> oh, dying, dying. Good, good. Any other questions from folks on Facebook or any other favorite moments? Um, from y'all on my on my team over here. Maybe we could just touch on, um, this is a series, we've been doing this series um, in aligning with our next season, which is a lot of, about the roles of women, um, about women um, standing up for what they believe in. And I, I think maybe we could, we could touch on a little bit just because um, this one certainly falls into that, that vein and mission. Um, what what do we see sort of the roles of women defined um, as uh, in the club acropolis world uh, and do how do we do we see any resonance there as far as um, in our in our world today um, does anybody want to speak to that a little bit I certainly think that's such a you know that's such a diverse question um, sure. I, I certainly hope that we're moving to a place where we're you know, deconstructing what we think the roles of women should be, because I think putting anything in a role is kind of setting yourself up for um, question, uh, question and differences in diversity. I think that all means something different. Um, I mean, 
I think that's I think that's a continual question. I think this play definitely poses that. Um, I think the Greek play um, was certainly before its time in posing that question. I think a lot of the things that are happening at the studio with the plays that have been chosen definitely take different looks at the approaches of different women because none of it can kind of fit in the same sort of box. And what my role is will be completely different from the next role of, of from the role of another woman just based on background circumstances, where we're from, what we know, and all of that. So to try and kind of put a role to it, I think is what is, um, I think what women are demanding to be dismantled in a way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. I think thank you. we're all really just working and hoping towards a world where that question won't have to be asked one day at least um that's uh, that's a hope that i have mm -hmm. yeah i think there's also an interesting in addition to the role of women in this play in particular the role like there's also it the status too that all of the all of the strong young men are gone and that leaves us with these men that it's sort of comical to defeat and i wonder what it would look like if we weren't fighting old men, you know? Hmm. <clears throat> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Robbie, can you speak to what you're directing next season? Uh, yeah, I'm directing uh, Pipeline. Um, and it is a beautiful play, very quick play uh, around, um, what it means, uh, there's a lot of themes, but essentially what it means to be, to be on a trajectory of perception, I guess, um, and how a mother deals with that, um, especially when in terms of her African-American son, which, interesting enough, I've been thinking about a lot <laughs> considering what's kind of happening right now, like in the fact that I'm directing this play and that it's happening and, um, and how they how they both deal with uh, living in America with the circumstances in which they exist, um, and how she deals with that as a mother, as an educator, how her son deals with that as you know a son of an educator, but you know, or a, a, a child of an educator, but still dealing with the perceptions of people who may not, you know, ask the question. Um, beyond you know the color of his skin and what he looks like and the fact that he poses you know a threat or looks intimidating and you know this idea that somehow african-american people women especially uh and and young men have to kind of give up their well-being for the comfort of others and what does that look like um and hopefully having that discussion in a way that is productive, um, you know, and Pipeline, I don't know if you know, but the, the title of the show, Pipeline, is kind of that, that thought process that is kind of prevalent in an African-American family where you go from, you know, the school to the justices and to prison, and so it's that line <laughs> um, that you can't really kind of escape, so you get stuck in this kind of pipeline, so that's where the title comes from. Um, which has me thinking about that a lot, considering the atmosphere we're currently in and the, and the happenings that have just gone on. Um, as an educator, myself, I have daughters, but I also have nep nephews and a lot of students who are, you know, Black men. So it kind of, it hit me hard uh, this week, just kind of thinking about both the story that I'm about to embark on in this season and, you know, this could have been people that I know and love. And that, that, that hit. I'm actually getting emotional, so I'm gonna go on mute. <laughs> because yeah. It, it, yeah. yeah, thank you for sharing that. Um, and thank you for um, being a part of telling that story this coming season um, and having that discussion. We, we are so, I think it's, it's so, so um, now, and, and we are uh, looking forward to, I think, doing the work of diving into that. So thank you. Thank you, thank you. <clears throat> Great. Well, I, uh, I'm gonna check and make sure I don't have any other questions here. 
just love, lots of love. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, lots of love. Cool. Well, I want to thank everybody for um, for being here. I want to thank you all for jumping into Lysistrata and uh, for the, the 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 fun wild ride uh, that we've had on that. I want to thank everybody um, who has uh, joined us on Facebook Live for the talkback and for um, for watching the production. It will be posted to the studio webpage and on the Villages Entertainment uh, YouTube page. So tell your friends, uh, they can check it out. It's not too late. Um, so go and have a laugh there. Um, also, I just wanna uh, thank everybody who's been working behind the scenes to uh, make these virtual re um, play readings happen. We're so excited about this series. Um, and you know, you can join us every Friday at one here on Facebook to check out the series. And uh, next is A Woman of No Importance. I may or may not have been in a few of those rehearsals and they are uh, really, really coming along. So I cannot wait to share that uh, piece with you as well. Um, thank you for, uh, for, for joining us today, and uh, we'll see you all soon. Be well, uh, healthy, safe, and we send you lots of love and peace. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs>